learn when we go to the ski area. This is where most people started to foster their learning or gain education in this realm and in this recreational activity, where we start with an instructor, we start with some sort of form of coaching, we gain knowledge and we gain confidence and we progress. We start trying new things. And then we fall off the chairlift, we hook an edge, we cross our ski tips and our confidence is a little bit depleted but we're still gaining knowledge of what we should and shouldn't do. We continue to progress and we continue to get better. And now we're trying new challenges. We're taking on steeper terrain. We're taking on more um, advantageous objectives like trying things in the terrain park. We get more direct feedback. <laughs> Maybe that wasn't the right jump to hit on the right day. Maybe that was too steep of a run to take that fast. But that direct feedback is there. And from that direct feedback, we now can actually gain a sustainable learning curve and expand our, our skiing. We can regain our confidence, come back to where we were, and further expand without constantly having to go through this ebb and flow of direct feedback. Maybe in the form of skiing, we start looking outside of the ski area. We start looking into access gates or you know, more, um, more technical terrain within inside of the ski area. The biggest thing to remember that doesn't exist in the, in the backcountry is the guise of ski patrol. We're in the ski area and we're going through this learning curve and we're gaining this knowledge set and we're gaining this skill set. We have trained professionals who are able to pick us up when we fall down and who are doing avalanche mitigation and control work throughout the day. So we can actually go out and push the limits and continue to learn and continue to gain confidence, but it's all done underneath this, uh, within these capacities, within these uh, protective umbrellas. What's really unique and what's kind of scary at the same time is as we start to leave the ski area and we begin to in, um, recreate and try backcountry skiing, we're leaving the ski area with what we believe to be a ton of knowledge and our confidence is based around that. So we enter the backcountry environment with quite a bit of what we believe to be knowledge, but there really isn't a whole lot of knowledge that we have to share. We're actually entering the backcountry environment with overconfidence. Maybe we go take some coaching, we go take our level one class, and we gain more knowledge and we gain more confidence. We start going out backcountry skiing with our friends, and we start to apply that peer mentorship concept. We start to actually put into action those skills that we learned. But what we're lacking in the backcountry is direct feedback. We all know, and there's plenty of stories, Bruce Tremper has famously written in many of his books that nine times out of 10, that slope may actually contain the snowpack makeup to produce an avalanche. You skied it and it might not go that day. You might not have been the cause. Maybe something else kept it from happening. Maybe you were a half a foot or two turns away from hitting that rock. You didn't get the feedback that you made the wrong decision and you were on the wrong piece of terrain on the wrong day. What's really scary about this is this continues to overinflate our confidence and we don't really understand where we're at and what we should really be taking on objective wise because we have all this knowledge from training and from courses and from coaching. but We don't have any direct feedback for us to understand that our confidence is either misplaced or our confidence is aligned so we're making good decisions and the right uh, choices.